the story behind biological weapons. Before we start, it's important to understand what a biological weapon is. It's a common mistake to mix up chemical and biological, as they are similar in many ways, including delivery and their uses. The difference is how they achieve it. Chemical weapons are weapons that use harmful chemicals designed to kill or inflict harm on the intended target. An example of this is pepper spray. A biological weapon, on the other hand, is a use of bacteria, viruses and fungi to kill or inflict harm on the target. An example of this is weaponized anthrax. As far as similarities go, they are both designed to kill or harm, are distributed in similar ways and are part of WMD. Or weapons of mass destruction. Oh, praise the Lord, they are banned, but we'll get into that later. One of the very first examples of biological warfare was the poisoning of wells and water supplies and settlements. One of the earliest was the Azraeans, who poisoned their enemies' wells with fungus during the 6th century BC, which left the enemy delirious and unable to fight. One of the most talked about pandemics in history is the Black Death, which some people believe was triggered by the Mongol warriors of the Golden Horde. While besieging the Crimean city of Kaffa, the army grew ill with the plague. As a last ditch attempt to take over the city, the Mongols threw bodies of Mongol warriors who had died from the plague over the walls of the city. As you can imagine, the city didn't fare too well. People blame this for the spread of the bubonic plague into Europe, although one of the causes, most don't believe it is completely accountable, but trade of goods had a huge part to play. Oh, and guys, it's just disgusting. And it wasn't just the Mongols there either, it is believed that British used smallpox against Native Americans. The British would give gifts of smallpox infected items such as blankets and handkerchiefs. These infected the non-resistant natives, wiping out villages at a time. This was sanctioned by the government with intent to kill, one of the first widespread uses of biological warfare. After this use, biological warfare didn't make a huge reappearance until the 1900s. The advances in germ theory and bacteriology brought forth more sophisticated methods. Biological sabotage, a new form of biological warfare, was undertaken on behalf of Germany during World War I. Anthrax and glanders were used for the first time. These uses produced a mixed bag of results. In 1925, the Geneva Protocol, a ban on using gases and bacteriological methods in warfare, was drafted and signed by 140 parties. With the start of World War II, many countries started the research, production and stockpile of biological weapons. The British established a biological weapons programme at Port and Down, research approved by Winston and Churchill himself. Soon a number of pathogens were weaponised effectively, including tularemia, anthrax, brucellosis and botulism. A point of interest is Grenard Island, which was quarantined for 56 years after extensive anthrax tests, proving how dangerous these weapons really are. Its programme was first to successfully weaponise a variety of pathogens and to produce them on an industrial scale, although the UK never offensively used their weapons. The UK weren't the only ones at it though. When USA joined the war, the British mounted pressure for creation of a similar programme for an allied pooling of resources. Before long, the USA had facilities mass producing anthrax, brucellosis and botulism. However, the end of the war however the war ended before these could be put to any real use. Now we get to the real dark stuff, so turn off if you don't want some secret experiment stuff to slap you straight in the face. The Japanese ran a most notorious program at the time. It was run by Army Unit 731, commanded by Lieutenant General Shiro Ishu. The unit didn't research on biological weapons too, but by different methods, such as human experiments that were often fatal. Although the research lacked the technical edge, it made up for it in usage and indiscriminate brutality. They attacked Chinese soldiers and civilians throughout. In 1940s, the Japanese Air Force bombed Ningbao with ceramic bombs filled with fleas carrying a bubonic plague. This delivery was ineffective, although 400,000 people are thought to have died. 
However, it wasn't just the enemy getting affected by the biological weapons. During the, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, campaign, 1,700 Japanese troops died out of the 10,000 who fell ill when an attack rebounded. In 1950s onwards, saw the weaponization of a plague. To La Romia, and later equine encephalitis and vaccinia viruses. The program, however, was cancelled in 1956. In 1969, UK and Warsaw Pact separately introduced proposals to ban biological weapons. In 1972, the Biological and Toxic Weapons Convention was signed by the UK, US, USSR, among other nations, banning the stockpiling of weapons except for protective and peaceful research. However, the Soviets continued research and production of offensive weapons despite signing. Even to this day, nine countries are suspected to possess these weapons. Thanks for watching. Have a good day, and this is the story behind.